Are you looking to learn some Elden Ring hints, tips and tricks? In this video, we'll take a look at 15 essential tips that I wish I knew way sooner. By watching all 15 tips, I guarantee it'll boost your knowledge and massively help you out with your Elden Ring journey. I will be showing a few boss fights in certain parts of this video, so here is your mini spoiler warning. If you're cool with that then, let's go. You may already know that the icons on your heads up display just underneath your stamina bar will show you the buffs or debuffs that your character is currently receiving, but there's a bit more to it than that. These icons can have three variants applied to them, which can tell you more about the effects. Those variants are, a square around the icon means that it's permanent, so that would usually come from something like a talisman that you've got equipped, for example a HP up talisman. A diamond around the icon means it's temporary, an example of this would be when you consume the item Exalted Flare which gives you a 30 second temporary attack buff and nothing around the icon means it's situational. For example, when you're close to a stake of Marika, which lets you know that you can revive there if you're defeated. Keeping your eyes on what buffs or debuffs are applied can help you decide whether to play more aggressively or defensively in combat. Have you ever seen those statues with the glowing light inside and wonder what's actually in these things? All you gotta do is lure a large enemy over towards it and make the enemy hit it to destroy it, revealing the item inside. Quite similar to this, you might sometimes see an item hidden inside a small wooden structure that you can't get to. So the trick to get into these kind of items is walk up as close as you possibly can do to the wooden structure, then save, quit, and reload your game. And when you load back in, the game will automatically destroy the wooden structure letting you pick up the item that was inside. You can sometimes do this quit and reload trick on the statues as well, but it's a lot trickier to do on the statues and it's not as consistent as it is on the wooden structures. After defeating an enemy, if you see strands of white particle effects coming out of the body, it means that they've dropped an item for you to pick up. Keep your eyes peeled for this as you destroy your foes. And if you want to get even more item drops, make sure to keep watching for the tip that's coming up later. Sometimes you may notice the glowing leaves of the Ur tree fluttering down and filling the screen with their golden light. Whilst the leaves are falling, this will actually cause an increase in the amount of runes that you gain when defeating enemies. You'll see the golden pickled foot icon on your heads up display. Enjoy! Get 20% extra runes all the way through your playthrough, making your character much more powerful by equipping the Gold Scarab Talisman. This talisman is found in the abandoned cave and is dropped by the mini bosses at the end, who are the Clean Rot Knight duo. This cave can be accessed by going east from the smoldering wall site of Grace in Kaelid and walking across the canyon by using the branches. The Gold Scarab Talisman stacks with the Gold Pickled Foul Foot consumable item, and this item will give you a temporary rune increase buff. So use both of these together to get a grand total of a 56% runes gained increase. Keep this talisman equipped if you want to be racking up those runes. You can swap your currently equipped talisman to the gold scarab talisman very quickly when you defeat a boss to gain 20% more runes. This way you get the combat benefits of the first talisman during the battle, but still get rewarded with an extra 20% runes for defeating that boss. You do have to be quite quick though because you gotta do it before it registers the runes gained. On top of this, you could also switch over to the gold scarab talisman when the boss's health is really really low. That way you're ready and prepared for the boss's incoming defeat. You could also use a gold pickled foul foot just before defeating the boss to get even more runes as the gold scarab talisman and the gold pickled foul foot item stack together giving you a massive additional rune boost the gold pickled foul foot lasts for three minutes so make sure to defeat the boss within that time frame once you pop the item are you looking to bag more item drops throughout your playthrough? Introducing the Silver Scarab Talisman. This talisman raises item discovery by 75, which is quite a large increase. It's found in a chest in the hidden path to the Halig Tree. To get to this place, you'll need the left and right halves of the Halig Tree secret medallion key item. You can get the right half by hitting Albus once, who is disguised as a pot just up from the village of the Albanorix site of Grace. This is close to the swamp area in the southwest of Lyonia of the Lakes. You can get the left half by defeating Commander Niall at Castle Sol, and it's found in a treasure chest just past him. Once you've got both halves, you can use the key item at the Grand Lift of Rold to get access to the hidden path to the Halig Tree. When you get to this area in the large central room, there's a broken section of railing. There you can drop down onto an invisible platform and walk to a small room to the side. You'll see a grave glove wart item on the floor, roll into or attack the wall behind that to reveal an illusionary wall, and you'll find 
find the silver scarab talisman in a treasure chest in that room. Keep this silver scarab talisman equipped to gain a lot more item drops throughout your playthrough. You could also combine that with the silver pickled foul foot consumable item, which increases your item drop rate for three minutes to get even more item drops. You can defeat a huge dragon for a massive amount of runes very early in your adventure. You can find this dragon who is called Greol in the northeastern section of Kaelid. The enormous beast will just lay there whilst you attack it, but be careful as sometimes smaller dragons can come to defend it. Although, usually the smaller dragons won't find you if you attack it at this specific spot here. It's kind of like towards the back and the left side. After defeating Greol, the smaller dragons that were around you will also die, giving you even more runes. For the biggest rune gain possible, you should remember to equip the gold scarab talisman and consume a gold pickled foul foot item just before Greyall dies. This way you can start your Elden Ring journey with a massive amount of runes. Quick question, if you could add a weapon from a different game into Elden Ring, which weapon would it be and why? For me personally, it would be the Sparta Sword from Devil May Cry because this weapon just looks cool as hell and it can transform into different shapes like a scythe and a spear for certain attacks. Make sure to let us know what you'd choose down in the comments. Ever wanted to go and upgrade your weapons only to find you've not got any smithing stones so you can't do it? I got you, don't worry. You can unlock the option to buy smithing stones at the Twin Maiden Husks shop by grabbing the Miner's Bell Bearing key items. The first Miner's Bell Bearing that you'll usually find is in northeastern Lyonia of the Lakes, inside the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Look for this red-ish hole on your map to find the tunnel. Head down to the bottom level and defeat the boss to obtain the smithing stone Miner's Bell Bearing level 1. Return Turn to the round table hold and talk to the twin maiden husks, select give bell bearing and then hand it over to unlock the option to buy infinite smithing stones level 1 and 2 from this shop. You can also find a somber stone miner's bell bearing to unlock somber smithing stones at the shop as well. Keep your eyes peeled for these miner's bell bearing key items as you play through because it's going to make leveling up your weapons so much easier. Get access to a handful of very useful spells that will help in a variety of situations by leveling up your faith to 15. You'll also need a sacred seal, which is a type of weapon that can be used to cast incantations. A quick and easy sacred seal to pick up is the finger seal from the Twin Maiden Husks shop at the round table hold. The incantations that you'll be able to cast with this setup are as follows. Bestial Vitality, which is a healing incantation that gradually restores your HP over time. You can get this spell as a reward from the beast clergyman NPC in Kaelid after giving him three death roots. You get death roots by defeating the Tibia Marinette mini bosses, that's the boat guys, and you'll also find some in the catacombs and heroes graves. Bestial Vitality is an absolute lifesaver in most situations. The next incantation is Flame Cleanse Me, which is a spell that removes any poison and scarlet rot from your character. You can find this one on a body at the Fire Monk Camp southeast of the Church of Van in Lyonia of the Lakes. Urgent Heal, which allows you to quickly recover a small amount of health. You can buy this from Brother Corin at the Round Table Hold. Heal, which allows you to heal a moderate amount of health for you and nearby allies. So this one is an area of effect heal. Again, you can buy this one from Brother Corin at the Round Table Hold. Sometimes Brother Corin is also found in the Altus Plateau. That can be north of the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace or near the NPC Gold Mask. And Flame Grant Me Strength, which increases your physical attacks and increases the fire damage that you deal. You can find this one behind Fort Gale in Kaelid on a body between two flame chariots. Get access to all of that and more spells with just 15 faith and a finger sacred seal. Absolute bargain if you ask me. If you ever hear what sounds a bit like wind chimes, it's usually a scarab scurrying about hiding some good loot and treasure. These unique insects will run away if you approach them, rolling their ball away with them, and they'll disappear altogether if left unharmed for too long. Make sure to hunt them down and defeat them as you'll get rewarded with things like your flask being replenished, ashes of war that can be used to enhance your weapons, and smithing stones which can be used to upgrade your weapons. Listen out for that wind chimes jingling sound as you journey through the land between. 
Don't worry about making the perfect character build right away. You can completely respec all of your stats a handful of times using a key item called a larval tier. To be able to respec, you'll need to defeat Renala first at the Rhea Lucaria Academy and then hand her a larval tier each time you want to respec your stats. So if you find a new weapon that you really enjoy and works well for you, then you can always choose to respec your stats to allow you to wield that weapon whenever you want. Channel your inner ninja and use stealth to assassinate your enemies. The range at which enemies can detect you is significantly reduced at night time. Use this to your advantage if you want to destroy your enemies with deadly backstabs or sneak past them entirely. Press the left thumbstick in to crouch down and enter stealth mode. Whilst crouched down, you can also crouch run by holding down sprint. Another thing you can do to play more stealthily is fire an arrow using manual aim into a wall or a place where you want the enemy to look to make them look in that direction, which will then allow you to sneak past them or hit them with a backstab. To perform a backstab attack, you have to be behind your enemy and be very, very close to them, then press your light attack button. Make sure that you're close enough, otherwise it might not trigger the backstab. Use these tips for a more stealthy approach to Elden Ring. When you get your hands on a boss remembrance, you can choose to trade the remembrance to the NPC called Enya at the round table hold for one of two very powerful weapons or spells. Usually you can only choose the one option which then locks you out of choosing the second option. However, you can use a mechanic to duplicate the boss remembrance, giving us a second copy of it which then allows you to choose both of the reward options. In certain regions of the lands between, you can encounter a giant walking mortal Mausoleum. You'll need to stop them from walking. Usually you do this by attacking and destroying some of the white skull type things around their legs. Once a walking mausoleum has stopped moving and sat down, head inside the doors and simply select the remembrance that you want to duplicate. The only thing to note here is you can only duplicate one remembrance per walking mausoleum, so choose wisely. And if you want another remembrance duplicated, you'll need to find another walking mausoleum. Another thing to mention is if there's no bell on the walking mausoleum, then you can only duplicate remembrances from the demigods at that one. An example of the demigods would be like Godric or Radan. If there is a bell on the walking mausoleum, then you can duplicate the remembrances from all remembrance bosses, including the demigods. You can also choose to consume the boss remembrance if you want to, to gain a huge amount of runes. On top of this, you'll still be able to duplicate a boss remembrance when you get to a walking mausoleum, even if you've already used it or consumed it earlier in your playthrough. <laughs> Have you ever pressed the wrong button and accidentally whacked an NPC, making them aggressive towards you and now they won't talk to you anymore? Don't worry, we can fix it. To remove NPC aggression, you'll need to visit the Church of Vows in Lyonia of the Lakes and carry out an absolution using a rare key item called Celestial Dew. You have to speak to the turtle, show him the Celestial Dew, then go and offer the Celestial Dew to the statue at the back of the church. This will reset any NPC aggro that you might have incurred. You'll find a few Celestial your due key items along your journey. One of them can be purchased from Pidia, a carrion servant at Carrier Manor. However, this NPC merchant is a bit tricky to find. You'll need to drop down from the cliffs around the back of Carrier Manor to get to them. It'll cost you 5,000 runes to buy one. Always remember the phrase, if an NPC hates you, use your celestial dew. If you enjoyed this video, I'd massively appreciate it if you pop it a like. If you want to see more video game guides, hints, tips and tricks, boss guides from me, then consider consider subscribing. You can also unlock early access to my videos by becoming a YouTube member. Press the join button for more information. Some more videos from me have just popped up on the screen. If you enjoyed this video, then it's likely you'll enjoy one of those as well. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.